Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to your TVC News of May 28th, 2020, special COVID-19 once again. Tonight's headlines, five long-term homes receive a disturbing score from the Canadian Armed Forces, $1 million for vulnerable residents of Prescott Russell, testing for all and extended property and water tax payments in Rockland. Five long-term care homes in the Greater Toronto Area received a disturbing grade in a report from the Canadian Armed Forces who were deployed to Ontario specifically to assist in long-term care homes affected by COVID-19. The report issued on Tuesday says that patients are suffering from aggression from caregivers, that diapers are not being changed, that nutrition is poor, and that they are living with flies and cockroaches. Obviously, those living conditions are completely unacceptable. Elderly people would have been left alone in extremely dirty diapers with no one to help them, while other seniors were not washed or moved for, for weeks. In the report, members of the Canadian for Armed Forces also point out cases of abuse of residents. Ontario Premier Doug Ford said at his press briefing that this report is the worst he has seen in his entire life. Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau said he was extremely sad and shocked and that it was extremely disturbing. This says a lot about what is in this report. The Army will extend its presence until mid-June in long-term care homes in Ontario and Quebec. In one of the long-term care homes covered in the report, staff were not monitoring the vital signs of some residents on a regular basis, as caregivers are supposed to do. The forces noted a lack of mouth and eye care equipment for palliative care residents. That important equipment was apparently locked and inaccessible. That uh, it was also noted that expired medications were given to residents. Several staff members, including physicians, reportedly did not use personal protective equipment properly. In one of these outbreaks, residents with COVID-19 were allowed to walk freely around the facility, which of course facilitated the spread of the virus. The Ontario Nurse Association, which lists 68,000 professionals, urged the provincial government to take urgent action and not just in the five residents mentioned. Doug Ford promised that investigations were quickly launched into all five homes. Well, let's move a little closer to home now. 8,005 tests have now been completed by the Eastern Ontario Health Unit at its six screening centers and in long-term care homes in its territory since the beginning of the pandemic. Medical Officer of Health Dr. Paul Rumiliotis explained that the demand for testing has increased dramatically since asymptomatic people have now been allowed to be tested. On a positive note, only two new cases were reported last Wednesday on the territory, bringing to a total of 146 confirmed cases on the Eastern Ontario Health Unit territory. The COVID-19 pandemic has left seven of the 10 food banks in Prescott Russell in need of non-perishable food items. Last April, the Valoris Foundation had organized two food collections by soliciting Valoris employees for children and adults to help local food banks. In total, Valoris employees collected more than $3,000 in donations and food items. This campaign provided support and comfort to many families in the region during this time of stress and uncertainty. General Manager Eden Fournier pointed out that most Valoris employees live in the Prescott Russell region and have been involved in their community both professionally and personally. The solidarity, teamwork and dedication of the Valoris Foundation and Valoris employees have held a positive impact on the lives of many individuals and families in the Prescott-Russell region. The United Counties of Prescott and Russell have just announced a first wave of funding in the amount of $1 million to help the most vulnerable people in the community. The funded organizations, the Maison Interlude, Prescott-Russell Community Services, several food banks, Prescott Russell Victim Services, the Canadian Mental Health Association, several residential shelters, Valoris, nonprofit housing corporations, and charitable organizations that provide food, security assistance, will benefit from this assistance. Social Services has also set aside temporary accommodation spaces to allow people with COVID-19 to, them, to isolate themselves excuse me, and thus prevent the spread of the disease. The COVID-19 crisis required a new approach to service delivery, particularly for the most vulnerable resi residents, excuse me, and this allocation from the province is critical to support the essential work of social services staff and community partners. 
A reminder that at the end of March, the provincial government announced the creation of the $200 million Social Services Relief Fund in response to the current crisis at COVID-19. The Eastern Ontario Health Unit now offers COVID-19 screening for everyone. This includes everyone with or without symptoms. We know that screening was reserved for symptomatic people, but the reopening of certain sectors of the economy has meant that the Eastern Ontario Health Unit can now test everyone. Medical Officer of Health, Dr. Paul Roumiliotis, increased screening will show whether the number of cases is actually decreasing and whether, whether other sectors of the economy can be considered for reopening. Expanding screening to the general population, regardless of symptoms, will also allow public health to better understand the situation in communities across the region, particularly among the group of people with asymptomatic infections. Roumiliotis reminds the public that a negative test result is not a green light. People may still be exposed to the virus in the future. The key, he says, is to monitor your health regularly and get retested if you notice symptoms or think you may have been exposed to someone with the virus. Dr. Roumiliotis again urges everyone to take precautions and limit non-essential outings. It was noted that the Eastern Ontario Health Unit offers testing at five assessment centres in the region, including one here in Clarence Rockland. Moving along from COVID-19 for a moment, We'll change the subject a little, that's going to be pleasant. Hawkesbury's oldest family business, Le Marché La Croix, which celebrated its 85th anniversary this year, unfortunately went up in flames last weekend. For Stéphane Joron, owner for the past 20 years, this fire is the worst ordeal he has ever experienced. Firefighters unfortunately had to destroy the building, which is a total loss. The damage is estimated at $1.5 million. The order to give a little relief to the residents and businesses of the city of Clarence Rockland during the pandemic was issued. City Council has decided that the property taxes and water payments that were originally due on April 30th are now extended until June 30th. Arrears notices and sales proceedings for unpaid taxes are postponed until next July. Those who are on pre-authorized monthly payments plans for taxes or water will see no change in their regular withdrawals on the first of each month for taxes and on the 15th of each month for water. Those on quarterly pre-authorized payment plans for taxes or water will see the amount withdrawn on May 31st. The City of Clarence Rockland has resumed issuing building permits which are available on its website. An employee of the City will contact all permit applicants and inform them of the new payment process. However, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, the process may take longer than usual. You can always contact Chief Inspector Chantal Bégin for more information on building permits. The City of Clarence Rockland has removed warning tape from all public benches and picnic tables to allow residents who need a few minute rest during their daily walk to use them. But we must continue with the habit of physically distancing ourselves at least two meters or six feet when using the benches and picnic tables. However, the city has not cleaned them and asked people to wash their hands before and after using the, and the benches. Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for taking the time and being with me for this episode of your TVC News. We'll see you next week.